Welcome to the third round of the Scottish Legends Championship from Knockhill Racing Circuit. Weather conditions are extremely iffy. We've got three exciting races coming up. Race one from the Scottish Legends Championship is lined up behind me in the Holden Bay. And as you can see, the sun is out, it's shining bright, but there's definitely some slippery conditions out on track. Now, I want to speak to a former champion, a young lady who is a little bit deeper in the grid for this first race. Carol, a wee bit of drama before this race. Yeah, I've um, got a little engine change as well, just to try and... I uh, wasn't really kind of overly happy with the, the power that we were getting up the streets earlier on, so uh, the guys are quite quick in changing an engine. It doesn't take them long, so just changed it over. Sounds like a fairly major job, but with a legend, I take it it's not that big a job? No, the Burnett guys can change an engine in about 25 minutes, so there's no holding them back. So it wasn't an engine problem, it was just that you purely weren't happy with the speed of it in a straight line? We were getting a lot of vibration through the steering wheel all day, and I actually came off yesterday and I couldn't feel my hands after the two races, so the uh, guys thought, I mean, it was going okay, but it's not worth it, so we just take it out, put the new one in. Let's have a wee chat about the weather conditions. The sun's obviously shining, but the, the surface here in the Holden Bay is obviously wet. You've had a good look at the track? Yeah, I mean, it's not kill as well, so you're never really entirely sure what's going to happen. So just take it as it goes. But the legends are quite tricky in the slidey conditions, so we'll uh, just need to take every lap as it comes. Make a big difference here with when you're on the dry line, obviously, because you're coming from sort of mid-pack. You're going to make your way to the front, but you've got to get off that dry bit onto the wet bit. Is it, is it tricky? Does it make much difference with these tyres wet to dry? Yeah, I mean, it's really just the braking when you try to kind of, obviously, you're overtaking people. You would try to get up the inside. You can't get on the brakes just as late as you normally can. And nine times out of ten, when it's that little bit damp, the back end of the car will try and slide out, slide out on you a little bit. But it's more fun. Good luck. I don't want to be sat there. Have a good one. Uh, no doubt it's going to be action-packed. I'll hand it upstairs to Richard for a run-through of the starting order. Race one of round three. Glen Burton Shaw on pole position. Alan Fernley alongside with David Hunter and Chris Hines. On the second row of the grid, David Newell and Kevin Catherwell line up on row three, then Gerald McCosh and Pat Hines, car number 25. Scott Hines and Billy Waite next to them. Full grid of cars, 20 cars ready for the start of round three. This the second part of a double header weekend. There's Robin Webb in car number 77 coming out on circuit. Championship leader Ross Marshall just going out of shot. Car number 91, young Daniel Mackay and 06 John Bushby great to see John and at the back of the field car number 82 David Allen cars coming down into the hairpin ready for their rolling start as ever in the Legends car so at the moment the season has been dominated by Ross Marshall the red and white Beatsons number 3 car prepared by Burnett Motorsport is this going to be a Ross Marshall domination again Twice champion, it's Glenn Burtonshaw though and Alan Fernley on the front row of the grid. Bertie with the go faster stripes on the 72 car. And away they go, four wide as they go down into Duffer Stick for the first time. David Newell gets away well. There in car number 80 is Alan Fernley who drops a couple of positions off the start. Alan, a newcomer to racing in the main pack and starting with the main grid, so we can probably expect to see that happen. But it's David Hunter that gets away, comes through into lead position in white look at that great start by all the cars carol brown in car number seven running second in the championship championship positions ross marshall out front carol brown second robbie burgoyne is currently third from paul o'brien car number 26 in green 
is Scott Hines. You need to keep your eyes open for Chris Hines, who started fairly well up the front in car number 27, the black livery car, as they come down into the hairpin for the first time. There is Chris Hines in 27. Gerald McCosh chasing him. He looks on the inside of David Newell, who gets it all sideways. And that's why they call him Rally Dave. A little bit of rally driving there, opposite locking. Actually, I'm not sure if he drives a real-wheel drive car in rallying but certainly that's the sort of pose that you might expect to see from them. Up across the line they go, Kevin Cattlewell up with the front runners as well. Carol Brown in car number seven, through on the inside. Past Kevin in car number 62. But race leader David Hunter is away. Ross Marshall got drawn at the, the back of the grid for this one, and there he is. Kettlewell goes out onto the dirt. Robbie Burgoyne in the red and blue car goes through on the inside. Then it's Ross Marshall. So Ross Marshall, championship leader of the red and white car. The red and blue car, Robbie Burgoyne third in the championship. And keep your eyes open for the black and white machine of Carol Brown, who's running in... in uh, second position in the championship now in terms of the other divisions in the championship David Allen leads the rookies from David Newell third in the rookies is Daniel Mackay and then David Micklejohn and John Bushby and the team championship two team cars registered the Fernley car car number 80 that leads the team cup at the moment from the Burnett number 5 team car which has thus far been driven by Kieran Murray but up, up across the line they go and it's David Hunter still in lead position. There goes Robbie Burgoyne up across the line. Pat Hines in 25, ahead of Scott Hines at the moment. So father leading son as we go back. David Newell in second position. Glenn Burtonshaw in third, about to be passed by Chris Hines in 27. Hines rides the curbs in 27. It's a reversal of the numbers there, isn't it? 72 and 27. Glenn gets a little bit of a wobble on and through on the inside goes Hines. Hines is going to try and take the position. Glenn, one of the... A very fair driver, Glenn Burtonshaw. Lots of experience running in Caterham's as well this year. Was there a little tap on the back end by Chris Hines? Up behind them is Gerard McCosh, who's running well. As ever, Gerard with a, an engine problem in was it round number one. That far ago it was, wasn't it? Uh, down behind Scott Hines in the championship, but gradually clawing back the points. A bit of a lock-up from Carol Brown at the back as they go into the hairpin. There is Ross Marshall in car number three, championship leader about to try and pass Alan Fernley. In fact, he's, he's got that done. Driving standards flag going out to a couple of drivers. And we're being told that's for Chris Hines, car number 27, for gaining an unfair advantage, probably riding the curbs. There's so much of this time penalty business going on, not just here at Knock Hill, but everywhere in the UK at the moment. As we go back to David Hunter from David Neal. So the two Daves at the moment in the Burnett team with Glenn Burton Shaw in third position seems to have fended off the challenge of Chris Hines who's running in fourth position at the moment so David Hunter yet to win a Scottish Championship race Carol Brown goes to Carol Brown no it wasn't a lock up it's engine smoke from Carol Brown the number seven the black car engine smoke she'll need to keep an eye on that one here they come down into the hairpin once again David Hunter leads David Newell very very competent rookie second in the rookie championship at the moment and it's very rare that you see a first-year driver up challenging for lead position so early on. This is, the, I think, the first meeting that he's gone into the mix, into the draw. The grid positions in Legends cars are, are done by ballot at a driver's meeting before racing starts. Carol Brown's engine does not look good. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets the uh, signal to come into the pits with that, with that problem. Alan Fernley coming under pressure from Gerard McCosh. Gerard down the inside lines, they're going to Scotsman Corner. Fernley doesn't want to give up the place, hangs on to it. The orange and silver car, not too far behind Robbie Burgoyne, who again is there with Chris Hines in front of him. Down behind them, the number nine car is Paul O'Brien, the Irishman. So Paul, I'm sure he's not particularly happy about sitting behind the smoke from Carol Brown's car, but David Hunter still out front in car number six from Dave Newell Glenn Burtonshaw running in third place fourth position is Ross Marshall Robbie Burgoyne now about to challenge the outside line of Chris Hines in 27 Alan Fernley having a good go in car number 80 Alan Fernley is really building his confidence and experience here this is a great drive from Alan Fernley Carol Brown struggling there and about to be passed by her teammate Paul O'Brien who goes up the inside line Carol really struggling with the car Alan Fernley finally succumbs to the Advancement of Gerard McCosh in car number 69, moves up a position. Gerard, always a calm driver on circuit. Really, for newcomers, a, a man to, to emulate because he's such a smooth driver. 
knows legends well. He's been, I think, probably in terms of uh, all the drivers in the UK, the man currently racing with the most experience. And Carroll's out. The engine's gone. Carol Brown out of the race. That is going to be second position down the Swanee in the championship because coming into this race, she was 100 points clear of Robbie Burgoyne and 135 points clear of Paul O'Brien. I think they're both going to score better than that. So Carol's going to be down the order as locking up is Scott Hines down the inside of Gerard McCosh. Robbie Burgoyne ahead of him in third position. Now look at that, Ross, Ross Marshall now challenging for second position, closing up on David Newell, who's in, dashing for the lead here with David Hunter. So Hunter in lead position, the white car, Newell in second position, Ross Marshall in third, championship leader. Now Ross Marshall needs to get to the front in order to preserve his record of six out of six wins so far in 2012. So the three teammates all together. Marshall takes a slightly more generous line over the curbs out of John Arweir. And Newell looks up the inside. David Hunter, this is not doing David Hunter any favours at all, being put under pressure by Newell. As Ross Marshall looks up the inside, looking for, for that position. Glenn Burtonshaw still there in fourth place. Here they come then, down the down through uh, his lops and into the hairpin, real radio hairpin once again. Ross Marshall up the inside in car number three he's surely going to take second position he does slots in front of David Newell so Newell down into third position now in car number four welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter joining me in sunny California Bill Wood and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. So David Hunter leading this one. Down Duffer Stip they go. Marshall putting the pressure on in car number three, the Beatsons car. A little bit sideways there, seems to carry a little bit more speed down Duffer's. Racing line at Scotsman. He'll maybe go for the inside line here. Circuit drying out nicely from rain earlier on. David Newell coming up and challenging for third position again. The audacity of the newcomer over the vastly more experienced Ross Marshall who's going for the lead Marshall goes for the lead and he's through Ross Marshall in car number three takes the lead David Hunter down into second position but Marshall goes wide what's the payoff from that he's lost momentum now back marking driver David Mickeljohn great to see David out on circuit is there and in front of him he will not interfere with the battle for the lead for sure but Ross Marshall's down to third Newell back up into second position Great driving by Micklejohn, who keeps well, well out of the way. Textbook stuff. It's a drag up the hill to the chequered flag. And it's going to be David Hunter taking his first win in the championship. David Neal, superb second, getting the better of Ross Marshall, who went from lead position on the last lap down into third. So Marshall beaten for the first time, but does get fastest lap. Congratulations to David Hunter on his first Scottish championship win. Robbie Burgoyne comes home behind Glenn Burtonshaw. Uh, Gerald McCosh in seventh from Alan Fernley. Great drive from Alan. Chris Hines in ninth place from David Allen and Scott Hines. Robin Webb in twelfth place, car number 77. They were followed by Pat Hines, Kevin Kettlewell, Daniel Mackay, Paul Mackay, then John Bushby and David Micklejohn in 18th place. And the Legends Race 1 winner and the first win, David Hunter, well done first of all. Thank you very much, yeah, it's been a long time coming. A long time coming, but a convincing victory. Eh, yeah, well, David and Ross kept me kept me under pressure, so that no, was good though. And the first person to beat uh, Ross Marshall in 2012? First I, well, see how long that lasts. Well, before, when I spoke to you, before you said, oh, I'll not beat him, I'll not beat him, he's too quick, and the next time you go out, there it was. Well, ah, he had a lot to come through, he was starting quite far back, so I got a chance to get a go and get away from him, but... He done well to come through and put him under pressure like he did. Congratulations, great job. Thank you, cheers. And the runner-up, one step further up. You're set for a win today at some point if you keep going this way. You had your first podium and now obviously uh, up to second. Aye, um, 
Well, that's me starting in with the main grid now, so I get an easier, slightly easier run, a few less cars to pass, but uh, no, it did well. To be honest, the start, at the start, I saw David getting away and I just tried to tag onto the back of him and um, try and pull a bit of, bit of a gap on the rest of the field. Um, but we saw Ross in our bumpers and then they, those two started tussling, so that's, that's how I ended up managing to get the second, but no, happy with the way it's went. Did you think about putting a move for the lead, take that first win? Um, I thought about it. I was, to be honest, I was kind of trying, but uh, I it was. Uh, I'll, happy. I'll take second. I'll take second. Well done. I don't think that first win's too far away. Cheers. Thanks. Third place home, and we're not used to saying this. Uh, Ross Marshall, commiserations on the third place. It almost feels like that, doesn't it? Almost, but it's still a podium. And like I was saying to the guys, if you're going to get beat, you don't mind getting beat by two guys in your team. It's another one, two, three for Burnett Motorsport. Uh, beat since Cargo at third place from the back of the grid, which is a fantastic result. The conditions out there are treacherous. As soon as you came offline, you're losing all traction. Tried a move on the last lap, hit the curves, just couldn't get the power down. Hairpin goes, I oh, will go for the outside of it, and there's a back marker there, so it wasn't our day. Obviously, you need to take that in consideration coming from the back of the grid to get the third is obviously a great result, but I think probably made a wee bit harder by when you're wandering off the dry line to be faced with wet conditions. Definitely. There's a dry line out there, so the track is running quick, but as soon as you step outside that the dry line, you're onto wet conditions. Carl put some oil down, so no, the track was treacherous towards the end there. Well done, Ross. It was great to watch. Cheers. Thanks. Race two of round three of the Scottish Legends Cars Championship for 2012. And pole position for this race in red and white is Ross Marshall. Paul O'Brien is alongside him. Remember, those guys started at the back of their respective group in the first race, this being a reverse grid race. At the back of the field, I'm going to focus on for a change. We've got four gentlemen racers who, who go off the back. Robin Webb is 16th. John Bushby in 18th. Next to him, David Allen and David Micklejohn starting at the very back. So those guys electing for the moment to start off the back of the field and enjoy their racing from the back. But meanwhile, we've got Ross Marshall, Paul O'Brien, Carol Brown and company at the front of the grid. Lights are on, cars coming up over the brow, ready for the start of race two. Ross Marshall, in theory, with an easier task in this race. He cut his way through the field to second posi third position in race number one. It's a very crowded start as they go down to Duffers for the first time. Chris Hines in the mix. David Newell up the inside of Kevin Kettlewell. Down to Scotsman Corner and it's Paul O'Brien leading the black car of Paul O'Brien leading them around Scotsman Corner for the first time. Very, very close stuff in the middle of the field. Pat Hines getting swamped just a little bit in the lime green 25 car but Kevin Kettlewell engaged in battle trying to chase Billy Wake. Glenn Burtonshaw behind him. Ross Marshall, though, in second position. There in car number 26 is Scott Hines. Chris Hines, of course, getting a top 10 in race number one. He'll be trying to build on that. He's the top of the uh, Hines family at the moment in terms of uh, points scored as they come down into the hairpin for the first time. And Chris Hines up, Scott Hines up the inside. Car number 26, Kevin Cattlewell goes a little bit wide as they come out of the hairpin. Gerald McCosh and Robin Webb engaged in battle down towards the back of the field. But it's Ross Marshall now coming through to challenge for lead position. Robin Burgoyne, is he going to follow him? Paul O'Brien down into second. So O'Brien very, very neatly there, slotted back into second position. Got the door closed before Robin Burgoyne could come in and challenge him. But it's Ross Marshall leading, very experienced, two championships to his credit so far in Legends. This is, uh, of course, his year where he wants to take championship number three. So a lot more track time in Legends, certainly than Paul O'Brien. The man behind them, Robbie Burgoyne, newcomer to Legends last year, last year's rookie champion. And before that, lots of time, bang! Off into the barrier. Off into the barrier goes Scott Hines. Well, I said that he was the top point scorer of the Hines family. That's going to certainly knock his aspirations in this one. I hope he's OK. It didn't look like a huge impact, but any impact off the circuit is bad enough as Ross Marshall leads them out of the hairpin. So it's Marshall, O'Brien, Burgoyne, then in fourth position, David Hunter. Kevin Cattlewell's off as well. Kevin Cattlewell in the gravel. Marshall's to the rescue brave stuff from the marshals as ever there'll be yellow flags out but of course the other cars the tail end cars are still racing quick look car number 50 Paul Mackay passed by Billy Waite Paul in his uh, uh, first year of Legends Racing got involved by supporting Gordon Shedden in the British Touring Cars his championship supports Sheds in the or Flash as we like to call him in the Touring Cars and Paul decided he fancied having a go at racing himself and enjoying himself very much. Chris Hines in front of him. Then Glenn Burton short in 72. He's uh, relatively clear 
in that little scrap between the two of them at the moment. So all good clean stuff. Gerald McCosh making steady progress through from the back of the field in this one as well. Clear space between Burton Shaw and the chasing duo of Billy Waite who non-finished in race number one as did Carol Brown and we've lost Carol Brown in this one as well so the former champion certainly taking a big hit on the points in this round as Robbie Burgoyne challenges down the inside Burgoyne nearly side by side with Paul O'Brien who again grabs the line as they go down Duffer's dip this is going to be good news for Ross Marshall who is going to in theory start to get away the second and third second place will start to drive on his mirrors perhaps just a wee bit David Hunter race one winner still there in fourth position very consistent season from David Hunter so far David fifth in the championship he was uh, newcomer last year getting better and better and better that's exactly what legends racing is all about it's not the sort of thing you can come in and win straight away the drivers that can do that are pretty few and far between to be honest it really is a formula that rewards drivers that stick with it Paul O'Brien in the black number nine car hanging on a little bit wide into the hairpin Robbie Burgoyne senses a gap up the inside can't quite get the traction you can see how wobbly the car goes David Neal challenging for fourth position behind them here they come up the hill Marshall O'Brien Burgoyne first second and third fourth place I'd quite like to see fourth because it was pretty close as they came out of the hairpin and I think it was David Newell about to pass David Hunter so the battle of the Daves very much on here in race number two again but it's Ross Marshall out front fastest lap to Paul O'Brien 62.094 for the man from Dublin there he is car number nine Paul O'Brien fourth in the championship and don't bet against the first Scottish championship win before the end of the season he's really got the pace this year knows how to get the car around, knows how to bring the car home, which is just as crucial as Robbie Burgoyne makes a little error there, gets the tail end out, loses time, look how much that error's cost him, and Paul O'Brien can get his head down now and try to think about catching Ross Marshall, he's certainly got the pace with the fastest lap so far, or is Marshall just taking it a little bit easy, he wants fastest laps as well, Ross was quizzing me after round number one about where he stood in the career wins table, and the answer now after round two is that he's passed Colin Noble and he'll continue to uh, pass Colin Noble in this round if he carries on the way he is there's Glenn Burtonshaw running in fifth place then it's Chris Hines Billy Waite goes across the line Paul Mackay next in car number 50 everybody making it through Alan Fernley having a pretty good race of things again now this is the battle that we wanted to look at David Newell chasing David Hunter so Rally Dave chasing Dave Hunter at the moment and uh, these two have been so far engaged in battle pretty much all day and let's see what Newell can do really adapted very well to Legends Racing I think he's going to be looking at taking the rookie championship lead but you need to bear in mind here that David Allen is starting in the gentleman's group so he's got a lot more work to do starting off the bat that effectively is, is David Allen saying I don't really want to get involved I just want to enjoy the racing I don't want to get too involved in overall championships there are a few drivers like that that, that run running the gentlemen's group here in legends start off the back of the grid if you think about it in terms of circuit racing most championships Formula Ford, Formula Renault any championship you have the fastest qualifiers on the front and then you might have some drivers that uh, are just there to have the race who start at the back they, they, the qualifying times are going to be down behind everybody else in Legends as up past Glenn Burtonshaw goes Chris Hines so Chris Hines up into sixth position here great manoeuvre by Hines Bertie will try and get him back so Chris Hines from Wishaw is he going to be the uh, top Hines scorer now I'm just having a think 505 points after round two playing brother Scott on 650 yes he is so uh, Chris Hines will go back to the top of the Hines family not that it's a separate uh, class but I'm sure there's probably the odd bit of bragging rights in it want to keep up with all the racing action at the track well download the new go racing TV iPhone and Android app and remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter with so much racing going on in the world You'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, 
It's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. And it's David Neal down the inside. I thought he was going to get that then, but he just thought better of it. Dave Hunter hangs on to fourth position. Robbie Burgoyne ahead of them in third. Paul O'Brien still chasing Ross Marshall. We go back and we'll pick up the number 25 car, Pat Hines. Good to see Pat out racing again. Jeremy Kosh and Robin Webb running well too in this one. Car number 77, Robin's first Legends meeting of the year, albeit the double header, missed round one. And as we said, likes to run off the back of the field. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. There is a place for drivers if you just want to race. You don't want to go in the mix and face the uh, the sight of Duffer's dip from pole position on that one. You can elect to start on the back. And a lot of drivers decide to do that. They want to go to work on a Monday morning uh, and enjoy their race. As on the last lap, it's Ross Marshall leading this one. Win number seven beckons for Ross Marshall. Not far behind, but too far, I think, to put in a challenge is Paul O'Brien. He's going to grab another podium. So it's Ross Marshall through the hairpin for the last time in car number three exits the hairpin up the hill checkered flag waiting for him and there is Ross Marshall there's the checker Marshall wins it seventh win of the year Paul O'Brien second and fastest lap third place goes to Robbie Burgoyne from David Newell gets the better of David Hunter he passed him on the last lap Glenn Burtonshaw next here comes Glenn challenging Chris Hines side by side Burtonshaw just gets it by a couple of hundredths of a second from Chris Hines, Billy Waite, then Pat Hines, David Allen, Paul Mackay, Robin Webb, Gerald McCosh, Alan Fernley in 14th place. What a great race from the legends. Here's confirmation of those positions that we gave you. Fastest lap in race two going to Paul O'Brien, a 62.094. Robin Webb came home behind Paul Mackay in 12th position. Non-finishers in that race, sadly. Scott Hines, Carol Brown, Daniel Mackay not making it to the start in car number 91. Let's hope he's back out for the final. Legends winner yet again, Ross Marshall. Um, you've got to be glad you came back to racing Legends this year, surely? Yeah, definitely. It always boosts the confidence getting race wins. Uh, didn't have it easy there, though. Maybe looked easy, but I was constantly watching my mirrors. Paul Bryan seemed to be getting quicker and quicker and quicker. He was finding grip at the hairpin that I couldn't seem to find. So, no, it was a case of looking out for the last lap board and praying for it to come out. And it came out and had a few car lanes to take it home. Really, really dodgy conditions, having to adjust your driving style for a wet track to a dry track, surely? I, well, we, I went out in the top of Duffus, was driving down, it was dry, up through Clarks, McIntyre's, uh, it's all dry. And then we get down to the start of Tri Oval, going down the hairpin, it's wet, round the hairpin's wet, and then halfway up the street, it's completely dry again. So uh, it was quite sh difficult conditions, but no, it's just a case of using your head, pushing the pedal when you've got the grip and being a bit more conservative when it's wet. So that's what we've done, and we've got another one. Well done. Thanks. You ready? Burnett Motorsport runner-up this time, so it's Burnett one and two, not the full podium. It's Paul O'Brien, second podium, well done. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great race. Got a better Ross into the first corner. Then I was leading after the first lap, and Ross got me on a run into the first corner then after the first lap, and then it was just get the head down and just keep clean, and I tried to keep up with Ross, and I was reeling him in here at the end of the race, but yeah, I say even if I caught up on him, it was going to be probably a challenge to get past him, but like it's just he's so quick, but I was absolutely delighted with that, so I can't complain. How did you find the conditions? Ross mentioned that the whole lap is completely bone dry yeah. until you get to the hairpin. Yeah, the whole thing was just dry and then you get to the last corner then and it's just coming in and you're just like sideways and you just don't know what, what way to go in about it. It didn't matter, you come in wide or tight, you're just going to run out wide onto the curb. So, no, it was good. Just like, like once you got out of the last corner, you're up the straight and it was no bothers after that. Good stuff. Yeah. Well done. And uh, we'll see that first win in the next one. Yeah, hopefully we come from the back, so it'll be a bit of a challenge. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. Race two for the legends and the third place man, Robbie Burgoyne. 
a name I seem to struggle with for some reason there, the surname. Uh, great result. Last time out, the first race that we saw, we've seen you in the podium in these slippery, dodgy conditions, and you don't get much slippier and dodgier than that, do you? Well, that's where the car seems to come on either. That's the car or it's me, but we're seeing we're driving, we're str sorry, we're struggling in the, in the dry weather, like with tires. Uh, these are the new tires that we had for the last meeting, we've had them all shaved down, but we just seem to struggle. We just kind of seem to catch up our net, boys, but we'll get there, we'll get there. I see, I see that, obviously, the tread and these are a lot less than everything else. You say shaved down, is that to stop the rubber blocks moving around so much? Stop the rubber rolling over on itself, yeah. It peels, when you've got too much rubber, it starts peeling the edge off the tyre. So, in theory, you're cutting rubber off the tyre to get longer out it, you know. So, so the older the tyre is, the better it is? The better it is, yep, aye. So it's, it's the opposite to what we were used to? Used to, yep, that's right, yep, with the BS. Well, congratulations, well done on the, uh, on the podium position. That was good, thanks, cheers. And we'll see that first win later on today. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs>
David Neal running well. Robbie Burgoyne's in the mix as well. Ross Marshall, for my money, hasn't quite looked as sharp as he did in the first two meetings of the year. Easy to say that as he dropped from uh, first to third. But, I mean, third place is, is uh, nothing shabby, is it, in terms of a result? And he's up challenging for Podia again. That's exactly what you need to do in terms of winning championships but it's Carol Brown leading David Newell up the inside for second position Robbie Burgoyne is now being challenged for third place by Ross Marshall Burgoyne grabs the line that he wants trying to pass David Newell on the inside as they come up over the brow back down the order 27 running well Chris Hines right in the mix here his brother Scott in the 26 car there Paul O'Brien in car number 9 trying to come through the field with Gerard McCosh in 69 Gerard chipping away at the places David Hunter a little bit further back in this one. The white machine with Glenn Burtonshaw in the black car with the stripes over it. Glenn, a graphic designer by, by trade, came up with the very striking livery for that car. And you can see Glenn racing in a K-Trip Championship near you too this year as well. So plenty of uh, racing time for Glenn this year. Works hard, races hard too as we go back to Carol Brown in lead position. Ross Marshall in second. Third place, Robbie Burgoyne. They're all fighting over that at the moment. David Newell in the mix as well. As David Newell gets more experience, he is going to be a major threat to all of these drivers. I wonder if we're looking at the top four in the championship, potentially, but by the end of the season. Add David Hunter into the mix as well. Carol Brown then still leading this one down the hill, down Duffer's Dip. Ross Marshall in second position. Fastest man on circuit at the moment with a 60.342 is David Hunter in white. So Hunter trying to work his way through the field and looking like he's going to go away with a win and a fastest lap albeit in different races at this three race as ever legends meeting Carol Brown coming under pressure out of John Arweir and Ross Marshall poised to make a move as they come into Carlo Corner or is he? No perhaps not at the moment maybe it's going to be on breaking as they go down into the hairpin The club in amateur racer here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. At the moment, he is following, following, following. That's John Bushby, I think, off in car number six as the cars come down his lots. Now, are we going to see a break here from Ross Marshall? Or is he going to do a bit of bump drafting and try and get Carol Brown away from the third-place car of Robbie Burgoyne and also David Newell, who's running there in fourth place at the moment, down behind Robbie? up over the hill again so Ross Marshall looking for win number two of this meeting somewhat unusually by his standards Carol Brown still out front in car number seven and they're not losing Robbie Burgoyne who's in third position so Robbie still in with a shout of this one David Newell will be thinking maybe now about first time wins in Legends he certainly looks capable of it from fourth place and it's a four car train for lead position if Ross Marshall gets in front I wonder if that position's going to change the four of them out of John R. Weir, all at the moment just thinking about what they're doing. The drivers that perhaps hold the cards, maybe third and fourth position. Ross Marshall normally is through and away. He's now starting to look a little bit more threatening. The news, of course, Daniel Mackay sadly not starting this race either. Hopefully he'll be back at the next meeting. Carol Brown goes wide. The door is open for Ross Marshall to come through in the lead. Marshall's through. And Burgoyne is through as well, up into second position. I think David Neal's going to do the same. And that's the danger of taking a wide line. You get hung out to dry. And Carol Brown, well, third position's not going to be a bad result for her after two non-finishes. But look at Robbie Burgoyne putting the pressure on here with Ross Marshall. Great to see. Look at the two different body shapes of the first two cars. Third and fourth, both the uh, smaller window coupe version, but it's a sedan of Robbie Burgoyne running in second position. Don't often get to talk about the car shapes. Uh, but now, this is what we thought would happen. Ross Marshall getting away. Robbie Burgoyne loses touch with the race leader. Carol Brown still in third position ahead of David Newell and now thinking about trying to get a second position back. This is the great thing about Legends, is that if you start at the front, you can get caught but a good driver will always be able to fight back. That's exactly what Carol Brown's doing now as they come round his lops. 
down the railway straight in towards the trioval section here at Knock Hill. David Newell looking threatening again in car number four. Carol Brown tight line down into the hairpin this time as David Newell looks around the outside. Oh, no room for him there. Carol, to be fair, grabbed the line that she wanted. Robbie Burgoyne comes off line, climbs up the hill. Meanwhile, Ross Marshall buzzes the pit wall. Ross still clear, all of the uh, top drivers lapping in the region of 61 seconds around Knock Hill. That's an average average speed of 70 mi 75 miles per hour. Back to Glenn Burtonshaw, very much engaged in battle with Chris Hines. So that is for eighth position. Jeremy Kosh running well, Billy Waite in the mix as well, Billy running in 7th position, David Hunter ahead of him, good to see Billy getting a good point score here and this is just how competitive it is if you think Gerald McCosh last year, championship front runner so all of these guys up with a man who's well capable of taking fastest laps, winning races as well, that's exactly what the championship should be about, so Paul O'Brien in 5th position just goes out of shot Gerald comes off line, wide line down into the hairpin Chris Hines in 27 still fending off Glenn Burtonshaw they've been pretty much together all the meeting so would have enjoyed their racing those two up across the line they go but it's still Ross Marshall out front there's Paul O'Brien in fifth position still trying to hunt down that top four and Paul will be pleased with his fastest lap from the previous race as Gerald McCosh again continues to put Billy Waite under pressure a sweep from Gerald Hill is he going to look for the inside no, thinks better of it. Goes for the racing line through Scottsman Corner. Billy Waite gets in a little bit sideways. Now, Gerard, in theory here, may get a little bit more momentum and capitalise as they exit John R. Weir. Is he going to get a better run through here? Or oh, Yes, he is. Look at this. Down the inside line. And this manoeuvre here, well, he can't quite do it. Can't quite draw level with Billy Waite, who recovered well from that moment and maintains seventh position. Gerard McCosh in eighth place, ahead of them, Paul O'Brien and David Hunter... Here comes Gerard though, down the inside line again. Chris Hines in 27 coming up to threaten and Gerard McCosh through into, into seventh position. Gerard McCosh into seventh position. Billy Waite down to eighth. They're having a really good race. Billy's going to try and get back onto it as they go onto the last lap side by side. Up over the brow. Let's have a look and see whether Gerard can get the position back. No, Billy Waite is, is there and hanging on to it. So Gerard will have to try again. Billy Waite in seventh position and you can see how those two dicing with each other bringing Chris Hines into the mix as well in car number 27 and that means Gerard's going to maybe get a little bit defensive Glenn Burtonshaw a little bit of drift of these at the moment I don't think we're going to see another four car scrap for that seventh position but it's still Ross Marshall out front here he is Ross Marshall from Carol Brown who's not too far behind it's less than a second the gap first to second Robbie Burgoyne still in third place David Newell in fourth position David looking at the outside line as they come down into the hairpin for the last time but it's going to be two out of three this weekend disappointing by his standards but championship leader Ross Marshall extends that championship lead winning the day overall on points Carol Brown comes home in second place And David Newell, I think, getting third position on the line. Yes, he did. So Ross Marshall, winner. David Newell in third. Carol Brown ahead of her. Then Robbie Burgoyne, Paul O'Brien. David Hunter with the fastest lap in sixth place. Billy Waite hung on ahead of Gerald McCosh. What a great battle they had ahead of Glenn Burtonshaw. Chris Hines, Robin Webb, Scott Hines. Then Alan Fernley. Pat Hines, 14th with David Allen and Paul Mackay. Kevin Kettlewell, 17th. And David Nicholjohn in 18th.
Ross Marshall leads the championship with Robbie Burgoyne now into second base and Paul O'Brien up to third. David Hunter fourth, Carol Brown down to fifth position and David Newell top rookie in six. I'm here with the third place man and it was a drag to the line as well for that second podium of the day. Um, aye, to be honest it's probably one of the best races I've had the day. Robbie was putting up a really strong fight, um, managed just to pip him at the post. Um, to be honest I wasn't sure if I'd got it over the line, it was neck and neck so uh, aye, really chuffed to get it. It rounds off a great day and uh, a couple of debut podiums. Aye, um, to be honest I wasn't expecting to be so far up um, straight, straight out of the box but to be honest, I need to thank Stevie at Burnett Motorsport. He sort of made me a good car here. Um, so that's half the battle, so um, I just need to pedal it. Well done, great result. Thank you. Second place, Carol Brown, you've had um, a nightmare of a weekend. Good results, but technically it was a bit of a disaster. Yeah, I mean, the, the last, the first two races of this round, basically, I, well, I didn't finish either of them. Two, two engine failures. Um, Still some oil, uh, traces of oil on the, on the wing yeah. e even now. That's all right, that's nothing. That's normal. <laughs> no, the, but I mean, it managed to uh, fire out a spark plug, the helicoil inside it, and the whole thing went with it. So um, I heard I, it coming into the pit lane in the previous race like yeah. a tractor. Yeah, well, Alan uh, from Burnett Motorsport drove all the way to Cumbernauld to get the part to try and fix it, drove all the way back up, uh, got the spark plug in it with literally two minutes to spare. So I was really lucky about it. So Shane was, was brilliant. Great result considering. Well done. Thank you. Ross Marshall, not quite managing three out of three, but still, fantastic weekend. Fantastic weekend. We've got five wins out of the six this weekend, so fantastic. Great points haul. Uh, just fantastic day. It's amazing watching you work to the front. It's almost like a, you do the same thing every time. It's sort of like you get one position, you wait, you get the next one, you wait, and you're sort of thinking about it the whole time. Aye, it's just you've got the strong points of tracking, you've got your weak points, you've just got to capitalise on your strong points. and. Sometimes it pays off you get one car, sometimes you can get as much as four cars. So the starts are a key area to racing legends, but at the same time it could... People say you can't win a race in the first corner, but it certainly helps, but you can lose it all season as well. It's only round two, but it's almost impossible to see you not reclaiming the title this year. It's a long way to go. It shows you Carol had unfortunate luck today. She's had two engines, eh? so there's 400 points lost just like that. So no, it's not over till the last round. Last year I had the bad luck at the start of the year, and I managed to come back from it. So... Carroll's going to be a strong contender come the end of the year. Well done, Ross. Great weekend. Cheers. Thanks. Well, that's it. That's all we have time for from rounds three of the Scottish Legends Championship. But do join us next time for round number four. <laughs>